So we talk a lot about feedback and you and I are both kind of kind of over it. I mean, we went through our periods where um, low distortion was really cool and if we had like 0 0.1 or something that was yeah, you know, not going to be accepted so well in the specs. We could just throw a little bit of global feedback, maybe some, well, local degeneration, of course, is different, but we could throw some some global feedback on it, lower that down, get the specs to where it's attractive. But I think both of us have discovered over the years that it's just not the best thing to do from a sonic standpoint, and yet it's still prevalent throughout our, our industry. And for those who listen as well as measure, um, Maybe you could help us understand your thoughts on feedback and, and why yeah. it's, yeah. Okay, so first thing is feedback is where you take the output of an amplifier, for instance. It can be other things, like sure. you, can, you can do feedback around a speaker, like yeah. a servo. A servo, yeah. Um, but uh, in the case of an amplifier, you would take the output signal and you'd feed it back into an inverting input into that amplifier. Now that inverting input would then compare the signal to the input signal itself and create basically an error signal and cancel out some of the the um, the actual nonlinearity of the circuit itself. So you're using the 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 uh, circuit's gain to to then apply an error signal that cancels uh, that inputs basically an error signal into the input of the amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, and so. The open loop gain, which is the gain that you uh, you have when you don't have any loop feedback around an amplifier, yeah, determines how much uh, feedback you, you you can possibly apply. Mm -hmm. So if I had like 100 dB of open loop gain, I could wrap, uh, I could create a divider and go into the negative input of an amplifier and divide down 40 40 dB, and that would give me 40 dB of of uh, feedback and leave me with 60 dB of overall gain in the amplifier. Mm -hmm. And so theoretically, theoretically, you'd get around 40 dB of improvement on that on that amplifier at that certain frequency. Yep. And that's a hundred times improvement. That's a lot. Yep. So, so that's basically what feedback. That's essentially how feedback uh, works in an amplifier. And it has to be negative feedback. Remember, it's going into the negative input of the amplifier, that signal's going into the positive. And so relative to the signal, it's the, the, the air signal is negative, or the the signal coming in from the from the output of the amplifier. It's the opposite. Yes. Yeah. And that's very important for stability. Positive feedback creates an oscillator. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't want that. But we can talk about it another time. <clears throat> the um so the the other thing, the other critical thing with feedback is that it really does what what people say it does, is it lowers distortion, it makes an amplifier better. It makes it a better amplifier by many, not just distortion, it, it lowers output impedance. It, it, uh, it improves the frequency response of an amplifier. So if, if there's a X amount, if a, there's X amount of open loop frequency response, wrapping feedback around the amplifier is going to to, going to increase the frequency response of the amplifier. Okay, so so m more feedback given that it's stable equals better amplifier. So, in in all respects that we would measure, uh, frequency response, noise, distortion, on on uh, output impedance, on down mm -hmm. the, on down the line. That's right. Yeah. And so and so uh, feedback is a incredibly useful tool so the first thing that I just want to lay out there is that we're not in no way are we saying that feedback is not smart or it's 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 or it's stupid or or it doesn't make sense at all it's it absolutely makes sense and and I respect the engineering principles there I respect the engineers that that chase maximum feedback there is an art to to chasing the absolute top amounts of, of feedback, um, which I, I study on the side. I love making amplifiers with, with insane amounts of feedback because it's a challenge to make them stable. Yeah. And so it's a whole, you can study about all uh, the compensation techniques about how to make them stable and all that. Um, but I, I really care about like the music, 
also <laughs> also so yeah. i'm i'm in you know I, I said this in the darko podcast you know i'm part you know engineer and part uh, music enthusiast i mean like i i really want the components that i put out to, to communicate music and to make people just feel music mm -hmm. okay and and if applying more feedback made me feel that way and other people if it made other people feel that way We'd have i would loads. do it i would i would make amplifiers with uh, THD equals uh, not measurable. Yeah. Um, because I have certainly I have circuits that that do that. Um, but 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 they don't. They don't communicate music to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's not what I choose to 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 put out in in my products. Mm -hmm. um, and so and so you know we're I think you and I we're chasing how we how we how it makes us feel. Yes. Which is really what it's about. Yep. And and it's about the fun. It's about music, enjoying the music, and all of that. So, mm -hmm. so what we want to do is we want to take those principles and we want to put them uh, in use in the studio. So, like you said, a lot of the, a lot of the um, people designing microphone preamps are going to be looking at the numbers. They're going to be measuring. Um, it's also going to be under a strict budget, which means they're going to be using you know compromised circuits. Mm -hmm compromised uh, components which uh, which do affect the sound um, and and we want to introduce some of the philosophies that we've discovered through making hi-fi gear into microphone preamps absolutely um, but we're going to be introducing new new areas such as ultra high uh, headroom in in the microphone preamps which is an important thing mm -hmm. um, uh, for dynamics, uh, especially if we're miking, you know, drums really close. I mean, the, the dBs that you can get off of that, the oh, SPL tremendous. is extremely high. So yeah. you need wide bandwidth uh, amplifiers, or I'm sorry, wide. I, I do want range, yeah. dynamic range. I do want uh, wide bandwidth amplifiers as yeah. well. Um, which, which gets me to another point. Why do well, let's oh let's, let, let's do that other point. Uh, okay. Because we're, we're running out of time again. All right. Uh, All right. And we'll save that for the next one. Okay. Sounds good. Okay.